name is uh, Sridhar Sripathi and I'll be presenting s- some general concepts about OpenIDM Live Sync and also a little bit about how to set it up and uh, the important features. The topics of discussion today are, you know, the Live Sync process highlights, the, we, we'll go over the different Live Sync strategies, the sync tokens, how it compares to re- reconciliation and how you can initiate live sync and we'll go over also how we configure live sync the main files involved uh, we are going to target just the LDAP uh, connector and uh, I will present a live sync functional view uh, basically it involves the, the main actors in the live sync process and the data representation uh, underlying in the repository and the directory and we'll also look at a couple of example use cases where live sync would be appropriate. So the uh, live sync process, uh, what is its purpose? Well, it's to track changes in external target systems and apply them to IDM's managed objects. Because IDM really has no other way uh, to track changes uh, of systems that it connects to, whether it's a database or a directory. Live sync is a lightweight process compared to reconciliation uh, because it only looks at changed uh, data that is changed in your tar- in your target system that is either OpenDJ or a date Oracle database or any other database that you may have. As opposed to reconciliation, which is lo- looking at a large data set and comparing that between source and target and then applying those changes appropriately. And the target system in this case would be uh, the OpenDJ LDAP, and it is polled based on a schedule. So the polling can be uh, within seconds, minutes, or hours. It depends on your requirements for how frequently you want the data to come over to IDM. The way it's tracked, uh, the changes are tracked within IDM is based on a sync token. Uh, which is basically uh, a timestamp representation that is stored in the database of OpenIDM. It keeps track of when uh, the last change was done or synced to IDM. And then it, uh, based on that, uh, the next polling cycle looks for all changes after that, uh, the values in the token. So the live sync strategy is based on a change number or timestamp We'll go in depth uh, in discussion on pros and cons of each strategy in the next sessions. Uh, but uh, the difference here, uh, change number or timestamp, at least from an open DJ perspective, is that a change number is based is a composite of of a timestamp, a sequence number that's incremented uh, based on a change, and also uh, a replica identifier. So change numbers could be different between different replicas based on what changes, uh, the difference in changes. Um, and so, and the timestamp strategies, of course, um, any change that is applied to OpenDJ would have a timestamp updated over it, and that change would be considered uh, a candidate for synchronization back to IDM. And um, as we talked about, sync token itself is stored in the OpenIDM repository and it's updated on every polling cycle. Um, so if it's uh, it gets updated minutes, or seconds, um, or hours based on how frequently you've set up your polling cycle. And finally, the live sync process, you can have it, as we talked about, a scheduled process or you can have it on demand so uh, it may be that you may require at the end of a workflow to perform a live sync and uh, one of the ways that would, you would do that is then make a rest call uh, from your workflow uh, to IDM to initiate the live sync. Now the live sync configuration for LDAP uh, involves basically three main files. There is the scheduler uh, dot JSON where you set up uh, how frequently you want the system polled and then there is a provisioner file where you configure the LDAP connector so your LDAP connector um, 
sets up uh, your connection, your connection pooling, and also uh, what attributes in LDAP you want the connector to manage. Um, and then there is setup of attribute mappings on the LDAP connector. So this would be a mapping of, let's say, uh, an actual name of the attribute let's say you call it given name in your open dj in your schema and you can call it any name you want you could call it first name as part of the mapping uh, so this is merely a representation uh, an abstracted representation of the attributes that your open dj schema contains and setup of attributes that will be synchronized from ldap back to idm can further be restricted in sync.json. So sync.json is definitely a very involved file. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in that file. It is basically the core of uh, what gets synced back to um, IDM is defined and how it gets synced back. So you could have, let's say, map 10 fields in your user um, from your user object in your directory. And in your mappings, in your sync.json, you can specify, uh, let's say, only three re three fields that you want sync for uh, in every live sync. And then you can also set up other things like correlation query, uh, each LDAP attribute to IDM field mapping, and how you handle situations and their corresponding actions related to these situations in the sync.json file. So the correlation query is basically, uh, as the name suggests, you're relating uh, objects to uh, in your directory back to IDM based on a query. So one of the typical ways you would relate them is uh, basically uh, by username. You would say, OK, based on my UID in LDAP, I want to match uh, an object in uh, the directory uh, which and the corresponding field is username and and you can say LDAP attribute field mapping you can specify that you want to sync given name CN and uh, surname back into IDM and the situations would be based upon what the results of your correlation query. So if your correlation query does not find a match, then the situation would be, um, let's say, absent. In that case, that open directory object does not have a corresponding object in IDM. And hence, you can choose an action of, let's say, create. You can decide to create the IDM object in IDM or you can choose to ignore completely of not doing any action or uh, or you can s specify a custom action you could do upon such a situation there are other situations called found absent qualified we can go over those but as the names imply those are basically results of what your correlation query has said and for each situation that you encounter, you can set up actions corresponding to that. And so here's a functional view that I'm trying to present here. It's um, on the right side, you see the OpenDJ user store. We are merely uh, focusing on sync of user objects from OpenDJ into OpenIDM. You can sync group objects as well, but for our beginning, concepts here. I think user uh, just uh, focusing on users would be sufficient. And uh, an open DJ typical entry would look like it has a DN, it has a given name, a surname, and let's say it's got a SHA, hash password, and some other flags that indicates that it's an active account. On open IDM, um, the main uh, the data representations are stored in managed objects table and there is a links table that tracks um, the relationship between your objects that have been synced from OpenDJ back into IDM and so for every object that is synced um, 
and maybe created an IDM, you will find a link that says uh, what is the name of the mapping, the type of the mapping, uh, sorry, the ID of the mapping, the type of the mapping, the source ID and destination ID. So if we, if we define our links based on username, your source ID and your destination ID could be, uh, would be both usernames there. So if your user ID is JDO, your source ID and destination ID would be JDO. And your link type would be, um, let's, uh, you could say system underscore manage user. So um, we'll go over that. We'll take a look at the representations out in, in, the, in their respective files here in a minute. So those are, yeah, that's the represent data representation, linkage, how it's done, and the actors in this whole live sync process. So example use cases, uh, the typical examples would be you want to do a scheduled or repeated data load from your directory into IDM. Um, let's say your ID, your data directory is being fed data from an external source um, or an LDF and on a periodic basis and you want to load that data back into IDM. So a live sync would be a great um, great feature to use at that point of time or let's say you are um, you have a system that is changing passwords only in the directory and but you have other connected systems to IDM let's say your active directory or your uh, or maybe a database that you connect to that need to be fed the same password um, so a live sync a process could be set up that fetches the passwords from your directory in the hash format um, and then uh, takes that password hash encoded password and sends it out to whatever connected systems you have. So that's basically uh, a very quick summary of live sync and uh, I will go over some of the um, additional files that are involved with the live sync process that we talked about and then focus on how they are set up.